Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and there's been some recent rumors and just some personal thoughts that I've had about the possibilities of what sort of computers we will get out of Apple's transition to Apple Silicon. One of them could be something that Apple really hasn't had in its arsenal a low cost MacBook. Now, before we get into this video, I just wanted to thank each and every one of you watching this video. Yes, you. We are on the verge to hitting that all important 100,000 subscriber milestone, and I am fully aware that this is a feat that is impossible without the dedicated audience that watches my content and the newcomers who are here for the first time. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button. Let's get this channel to those all important six figures and you too can be part of one of the greatest moments in history that will end up there with the likes of Washington crossing the Delaware, the allied victory in World War II, landing a human on the moon and the invention of the iPod sock. This milestone, in my opinion, easily eclipses all of those achievements. Also, it's my birthday on August 6th, so I mean, that would be a pretty awesome birthday present uh, if we're able to hit 100,000 by then. <clears throat> so if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, or gently tap it, that, that works too. Let's get to 100,000 subscribers together and make yourself part of history. Speaking of history, it was five years ago when Apple released the 12 inch MacBook. And while I would offer a detailed and thorough retrospective on that 12 inch MacBook here, I actually did an entire dedicated video on that product not too long ago. So if you wanna know even more about the history of that laptop and how it performs in 2020, make sure you check it out. But to make a long story short, that 12 inch MacBook was a extremely thin and light, beautiful fanless laptop that suffered because of three major issues. That can be fixed by Apple transitioning over to their own Apple Silicon. The first issue was the low powered Intel Core M chips, which impacted the performance of this laptop, especially in its thin fanless design. Although this laptop was probably good enough for the lighter task that most users would use it for, it would struggle when you threw heavier workflows on it. The second problem was the butterfly keyboard. The butterfly keyboard had really short travel, which some users frankly just could never get used to. And on top of that, it had reliability issues, which spawned three to four generation of fixes for the butterfly keyboard, which then was eventually replaced by the new Magic Keyboard. The third issue was the price. The main reason people could not stand the performance of the 12 inch MacBook was because it had a starting price of $1,299. That's the same starting price as a 13 inch MacBook Pro at the time. Why buy such an underpowered laptop when you can get much better performance from a laptop that many people already regard it as thin and light and get a bunch of ports on top of that. I guess the fourth problem for the MacBook was that it only had one USB-C port and introduced us to Dongletown USA. Those collections of faults and the fact that Intel never really got a grasp on how to manufacture those lower powered chips are in part why the 12 inch MacBook failed. But like I recently said in my retrospective video on this laptop, Apple should revisit it now, now that they are transitioning all of their computers over to their own custom Apple Silicon. And well, it looks like they are. Recent rumors have sprung up, and again, we should take these with a major grain of salt as a lot of these new Twitter accounts who really do not have an established long track record are saying that the new MacBook is on the way and it could fix most of the major pain points of the original. First of all, this new 12 inch MacBook would have a processor that is based closer to the A14X architecture. Now, Apple said that Macs would have their own custom silicon chip range, and I believe that even if this MacBook is based on the A14X, it will have some distinct advantages that will make it more powerful than the equivalent iPad Pro. Even so, if this was just a regular A14X processor thrown in there, it would without a doubt be way more powerful than what the 12 inch MacBook was able to accomplish with its Core M Intel chips, and it would probably even outclass current powerhouse laptops like the 10th generation Intel 13 inch MacBook Pro. I say this because the A12Z processor already found on the 2020 iPad Pro 
easily outscores some of those newer laptops, not only in benchmarking scores, but even in real world tasks like video exporting. And A14X is two chip generations ahead of the A12Z already, so we stand to see even more performance gains over what already is an amazing iPad Pro processor. It would not surprise me if this new low powered 12 inch MacBook is more powerful than any of the 13 inch laptops that Apple sells today. On top of that, the A14X will be based on a five nanometer fabrication process while Intel is still stuck on 10 nanometers. Apple has already proven that it knows how to make mobile CPUs that draw way less power and offer even faster performance. Because these chips draw less power, they will also extend advantages into thermal design and battery life. The 12 inch Intel MacBook had a fanless design that could still get pretty hot. With Apple Silicon, it stands to reason that this 12 inch MacBook could have a fanless design and probably run cooler than the current iPad Pros, which already run pretty cool, thanks to the bigger overall footprint and more spaced out components. On top of that, the leaks are also saying that battery life will also improve thanks to to Apple's amazing processor efficiency with the battery size of a MacBook. So this MacBook would have an estimated rating of 15 to 20 hours of battery life, and we could finally have a MacBook that has battery life that could last for multiple days. All while maintaining that two pound lightweight and impossibly thin design, this MacBook will be the pinnacle of the future direction that Apple can now take with the Mac platform thanks to this Apple Silicon chip design. Now, even though this all sounds great, there are some other factors to consider if the 12 inch MacBook does make a return with Apple Silicon. Because of just how thin that MacBook is, Apple won't be able to ship it with the new Magic Keyboard. In fact, it was the original 12 inch MacBook that introduced us to the butterfly keyboard because Apple needed to engineer a new keyboard that could fit in that really thin chassis. This MacBook is rumored to come with a fourth generation butterfly keyboard. I know a lot of you don't want the return of the butterfly keyboard, but I actually think this is okay, given a few conditions. First off, Apple needs to make sure that these keyboards are rock solid reliable from day one. People need to be able to trust this keyboard and Apple needs to tell us definitively if they fix the issues with the butterfly keyboard. So this keyboard should have absolutely no stuck keys, repeating keys, or other issues that plague the original butterfly keyboard lineup. Secondly, this is one model. And even if Apple reintroduces the butterfly keyboard on these new thinner MacBooks, they need to make sure that laptops like the MacBook Pro continue to have an option for their new Magic Keyboard with more travel. So as long as Apple can continue to make sure this keyboard is reliable and that at least some of their laptops retain the Magic Keyboard, I think it is perfectly fine to ship this MacBook with a low travel butterfly keyboard. Although I personally think that Apple might want to rebrand this keyboard with another name as to avoid the bad connotation with the butterfly keyboard. I might suggest calling this something like the Air Keyboard or some other Apple name like that. Unfortunately, it looks like as Apple is continuing the trend of making MacBooks thinner, the webcam on this is still going to suffer, but at least the rumors are that it's going to a 720p FaceTime webcam, which will be an upgrade from the original MacBook, which shipped with just a truly awful 480p webcam. And it will still have some limitations as current rumors suggest that it is still going to try and be the iPad Pro of MacBooks and ship with only one USB-C port. Maybe this will be a more acceptable strategy in 2020 as we continue to ditch ports in favor of more wireless technology. But for a lot of power users, it's definitely going to be a limiting factor which will have them thinking twice about picking one up. However, this brings me to perhaps the most exciting point of all this speculation, and that is that this MacBook is rumored to be coming in at a price point even lower than the current MacBook Air, with current rumors suggesting a $800 price point. This would be, I believe, the lowest cost MacBook that Apple has ever offered, breaking that $1,000 price barrier to the entry level into the Apple ecosystem and putting it at a price of an 11 inch iPad Pro. And this actually isn't that crazy to think about. Apple has been introducing more and more products at affordable price points, like the $329 iPad, the $179 Apple Watch Series 3, and even the new $400 iPhone SE. This 12 inch MacBook aimed at $800 would become the default option for 
for people looking for a MacBook and could become the ultimate student, business, and with an A14X chip, perhaps even a creative powerhouse for people on a budget. I, for one, am so excited to see what Apple is capable of with these Apple Silicon Macs as it truly will revitalize and differentiate the MacBook lineup from all of its competitors, and it will be a standout feature that other laptops just simply won't be able to offer. Now, when you can pick up this 12-inch MacBook, we don't exactly know, but Apple has promised Apple Silicon Macs by the end of this year, so it could be in that first wave of new Macs, or perhaps following shortly after the release of the 13-inch Apple Silicon MacBook Pro. So I would expect, if this is being worked on, to be at the end of this year, or probably more likely in the first or second half of 2021. But anyway, that's what I think about the rumored 12-inch Apple Silicon MacBook. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. As always, if you like this video, make sure you give me a like. If you want to see more from my channel and help me hit that 100,000 subscriber goal as soon as possible, make sure you're subscribed. If you want to help the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of the links in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.